Hey, what's up everybody? Jason here. Thanks for checking out the channel. So today I'm taking a look at the AI builder in Bubble. And this is actually the second time I've recorded this video. I was gonna do a live tutorial on it and then I realized this really doesn't need to be a very long video because it's pretty basic, it's pretty limited, and it has a certain set of use cases that I think it will work really well for. And the number one is building a one-page website extremely fast. So let's take a look at this feature. So to use this feature, you go up to your page list here and you click on add a new page with AI and it's going to prompt you for a few different types of pages. So let's just pick a landing page because I think probably the best and maybe only use case for the AI feature is building a one page website very fast if you are a no coder, meaning you've never done any development before. So you've never built with HTML or CSS you just have an idea for a website or you want an online presence created very quickly and maybe you'll build an application after the fact, that's probably the best use case. So I'm gonna pick landing page and then hit next. And then it asks you to create a prompt. And you can also choose to use your existing style variables, which I'll say more about in a, in a minute because I did test this a few times off camera and it's pretty limited. Um, and especially if you have an existing app or if you have a very large app, using this AI builder is probably gonna cost you more work than just building it yourself. So let's get into this case about just doing a simple page. Now there is an interesting little prompt guide in the back. So it tells you a little bit about prompts it gives you a recommendation for length. So you can't put a lot of instructions in one or two sentences. And then uh, it gives you some variables where you can replace these in your prompt. So it gives you some examples at the bottom that describe these. So basically you're trying to give it enough context so it can source the right content and the images. And you can also decide what types of images you want it to show. So if you wanted to do like an 80s, video gaming one page site and you wanted pixel art, you could put that in there. Or if you wanted fantasy art or cinematic, you can choose the style of the images that you want. It is very limited though. So color schemes involving more than one color will not work, which seems kind of weird. And it flat out says that the landing page is the most customizable page. The other pages uh, will have a lot less color and photography. So a couple of the example prompts that they give just to help you structure it is I want a landing page for this purpose. These are the users. They want to do this. The page should be this color. This is the kind of emotion. Use these types of images and this type of font. So this is probably a good thing to follow. I'm gonna leave this out just so we can see what it creates. But to be blunt, this is basically the same as going to Marketplace and starting an app from a template and all it does is it replaces the placeholder text and the images based on the context of your prompt. So in this example of the dog walking marketplace, all of the headings, the body content, the images are all gonna be dog themed. And that's really it. It doesn't really do anything else. So let's take a look at a couple of the examples that I did off camera. So I asked it to create a band site with a list of features. And this would be a site that would basically allow musicians to find bands, bands to find musicians, and then also a marketplace where you could find help for songwriting and music production and some of those other things. I didn't give it any parameters as far as color or type of image because I wanted to see what it would create. I also did not select this box, use existing style variables, and this is what it created. So, like I said, it just replaced all this placeholder text in a template with music specific stuff. And it tried to create a menu up at the top based on the uh, prompt and the features that I listed in there. And nice and clean, looks very nice. The good thing is, is it's perfectly responsive out of the box. So if I start shrinking this, you're gonna notice all the elements resize very well. And then once you get to a certain breakpoint, you get the little hamburger menu. So that's a huge time saver. And if you're new to Bubble, creating something responsive is probably the biggest learning curve. So especially if you're not familiar with CSS and flex layouts and things like that, it can be very difficult to build an app the first time and make sure it looks nice on every device. So it's nice that this is actually perfect and done, done very, very well. So you can see these content boxes here 
as I shrink things down, it resizes them very nicely, and then eventually they go full screen. So if you're browsing this on a phone, and you'll notice that the margins and the spacing and everything adjusts automatically. So that is actually done very, very well. Um, and the second example that I did was the same prompt, but I checked the box that said use existing styles. Now this is my tutorial app and I'm just using the basic bubble styles. I haven't customized anything in here. You'll recognize this if you've created a bubble app, it has the purples and blues, and lots of white space and stuff like that. So the layout is identical. Uh, some of the menu options were a little bit different, but everything else is identical, exactly the same. There's the testimonial section, the blog articles, the mailing list, and then the footer down at the bottom. So now what I wanted to do was I want to actually use their prompt guide in here, but replace it with music stuff. So let's go and take uh, a, this landing page example for dogs. I'm going to paste this in here. Okay, so here's the prompt that I'm going to want to use. It's in the description below if you wanted to check it out. I just basically customized the dog walking one. I'm not going to use existing style variables and let's see what it will create. Okay, so here's what it created. It tried to add this, some of the menu options. There's basically no difference between their suggested prompt and the one I used that was not even close to the structure of the prompt that they suggest. So if you look at this one, the previous one I did and the other previous one, this is the one where I did not suggest any colors or any fonts or anything. I just said, I want a site that does this and I picked landing page as the type but everything was exactly the same. So all this is really doing, like I said, is it's pulling a template and it's customizing the text and the images and that's it. I'm gonna do one more example and then I'm gonna get into the pros and cons uh, of this feature. So let's just say I'm an independent consultant and I just need a presence on the internet somewhere, which seems crazy because who wouldn't have one right now? But let's try this anyway. Okay, so this is the prompt I'm gonna use for a one-page website. Just, I'm an independent life coach. I want a landing page that showcases this. It should include testimonials, a list of services, warm and friendly, etc. Again, this prompt will be in the description if you wanna check it out. So now let's see what it creates. Okay, so this is basically identical to all of the other ones, right down to the length of the text, all of the different headings. It's just replacing the images, the text, and the color, basically, and that's it. So it's really no different from using a template. So let's get into some of the pros and cons uh, before I wrap this up. Okay, so the pros, obviously, you can build a one-page website very, very, very fast. Minimal editing, you could be live and in production within a couple of hours. This is assuming you weren't too terribly picky about layout or format or colors, which, again, you could modify pretty easily even if you're brand new to Bubble or brand new to, to no code in general. So that's definitely one of the pros and probably the only one for the AI builder. Now, the cons, there's a giant list of them. Uh, this is a new feature, so give Bubble a bit of a break. It's a pretty good start, and uh, knowing Bubble, the way it's evolved over the last couple of years, give this another three, five, six months to a year, they're going to probably add a lot more AI features that will make this a lot more use useful for people who have existing sites. So, for example, for my two applications that I have, um, this is not terribly useful unless I wanted to pillage some of the things on the page that I didn't want to build. So for example, the way that these boxes are set up here. This is done very well, very nice and responsive. I could just simply copy and paste this whole group and then paste it into my app. So I could use this to create different widgets. So if I were to go here and say new page, if I wanted a social feed, I could just create a social feed using their AI and I could just steal whatever widgets on the page that were going to be the most useful. That would save me time for building. But here's where it's going to cost you more time. So regardless of picking that checkbox where it says use existing styles or not, it doesn't actually use any styles. So for example, if I open up the properties for this heading, it's not actually creating and using a style. It's just, it's creating an app font and it's creating all of this stuff in line. Same for all the groups. So it's just using a background style of color. Same for the menu options. It's just creating all of this stuff in line. So if you did want a multi-page site, you're gonna need to spend probably a couple of hours 
updating this. And for example, what I would do if I wanted this to be my menu items, I'd have to add these as new styles. Let's see, V3 nav buttons. And then I would have to go here and update all of these because if I did want to change the colors and stuff later on, obviously that's going to be very difficult if you have to do that with a whole bunch of different buttons. The other thing would be this should be a reusable element, this header, so you don't have to recreate this on every page. And then if you wanted to change your logo, you've got to go and update that in all four of these pages. So if you're new to Bubble, a reusable element is basically something that you can reuse over and over again. And you create and edit things in one place, and then it takes effect everywhere else. So if you wanted to modify this menu, you only have to do that in one spot. And that would be the same for all of these. I would have to change all of these to use my existing heading styles. This would have to be converted to a repeating group to pull the data from somewhere. Same with this, if you wanted to update and change some of your features. Client testimonials, this would have to be data-driven. Uh, otherwise, you're gonna have to redeploy your app every time you want to create a testimonial, stuff like that. So there is going to be a lot of work if you wanna do something that is more than just a static page. So the last thing is, and this is obvious, but I'm gonna say it anyway, this does not create any workflows. It doesn't create any data things at all. So you're gonna have to do that. All it basically does is copy a template over and replace the text based on the prompt that you picked. So I think as a starting point, I think this is really targeted at people who are brand new to Bubble uh, because a benefit is it's gonna actually show you how the app is built as well. So it can be used as a pretty good learning tool. You know, you can see how they've structured their groups here. You can see how they've done um, the material icons, which is that little hamburger menu here. So you can see how it actually created uh, the hamburger item and then also how it is allowing you to click these things. So you can see when sign up is clicked, animate this mobile menu, when testimonials is clicked, animate this menu, etc. So you can use it as a good learning tool, especially when it comes to creating responsive layouts. So example, these boxes that I showed, you can see the conditions that they set. And if you're new to Bubble, there's no way you'd be able to figure this out. So it's nice that it shows breakpoints and breakpoints are basically how you get your Bubble app to look different on different sized devices. So when you're going less than 1200 pixels, it's gonna change the width, uh, min and max width for each box. When you go down to say portrait on an iPad or like less than 768 pixels, it's gonna change the width to this. And then less than this, it's gonna make all of these boxes 100%. That's what allowed it to shrink. So as a learning tool, it could be pretty good. But for those of us who have been using Bubble, other than creating something with AI and maybe stealing some of the widgets it creates, um, not too terribly useful, but definitely useful for people who are new and might just want a one-page website. So drop a comment below if you've got questions about the AI builder. Remember to hit like and subscribe to get notified when new videos come out. Thanks for checking it out.